All right, this is a quick introduction into chi-squared goodness of fit test. To make a brief explanation of what chi-squared is, it's a scientific mathematical way to prove something is out of the ordinary. Before we even talk about a scientific example, let's give a basic example of what out of the ordinary means. Let's pretend that I was going to flip a coin 100 times with you. And every coin flip, we're gonna bet $5. And every coin flip we flip, we see who wins, we trade the $5 for whoever wins. If we were to flip it 100 times and I were to win 50 times, would that be out of the ordinary to you? No. no. Okay, no. because that's pretty much what's expected. All right, 50-50. Let's pretend now I won 62 times. So I won 12 more times than expected. Would that be out of the ordinary to you? Yeah, now someone's saying, eh, I don't know, I'm starting to get nervous. You may start to think that I'm cheating. 62 could happen. The question you have to ask yourself is how often should 62 wins when I'm expecting 50 would happen? Let's get to the absurd case. Let's pretend I win 89 out of 100 times. Will you think I'm somehow cheating to steal your money? Probably. Absolutely you would. Um, if you don't believe me, any student that's in Mr. Patterson's class, flip a coin 100 times. See how many times it comes up heads. If it doesn't come up 89 or the opposite 11, do it again. Flip it another 100 times. I bet you would have to play this game at least 1,000 times to get 89 heads. It's out of the ordinary. That's sort of what chi-squared is doing. I came up with a little example of a place that has a bunch of snakes. Now, first of all, chi-squared uses this mathematical formula to see what's out of the ordinary. This is just a symbol for chi-squared, and we are going to do the summation, which means we're going to add up a bunch of data, and we're going to look at what we observed, what we expected, subtract them. We will square that total and then divide it by the expected amount. So let's pretend, for my example, we have how long a snake is supposed to be after so many days of its life. So we have a snake after day one, it comes out being about five inches long, and then it grows after five days to nine, 13, 19, and 32. These values should be set. You should know these values before you start to do a chi-squared situation. So then you looked at Farmer Joe and Farmer Fred's population of snakes. And you notice Farmer Joe lives in a nice, ordinary field. You grabbed a snake and you measured its length for those 30 days. Farmer Frank lives on a chemical, bad field where snakes are dying. Boo. Boo, <laughs> Farmer Frank. And these are his Farmer. snake <laughs> sizes. The question is, are Farmer Frank's sizes out of the ordinary? That's our question. So let's start with just looking at Farmer Joe. So Farmer Joe, on his first day, he measured his snake to be four. Let's put four into this little formula. So this is day one for Farmer Joe. We observed his snake was four inches when it's supposed to be five. We'll subtract. Four minus five is negative one. We'll square that. When we square that, we get one. When we divide that by the expected length of five, we get a value of 0.2. Before I continue any further, any, let's say, value between zero and about 0.5 is relatively normal. Once you get above a 0.5, things start to get a little shaky, a little nervous. So now we go with his uh, five-day uh, size of his snake. So it's 10 minus 9, which again is 1. 1 squared is 1, divided by the expected value of 9, gives us a value of 0.11. Let's go to day 10. We have 13 minus 13, which is 0. 0 squared is 0 divided by the expected value of 13 would still give us a zero. On day 20, 
His snake was 18 minus the expected value of 19, which is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, divided by the expected value of 19 is 0.052. And then we have the last piece of data, which is 33 minus the expected of 32 squared, which is still 1, divided by 32 gives us a value of 0 0.03. Now, this summation says I have to add all these values up right here. If we had a calculator and added it up, we'd get a chi-squared value of 0.393. Now remember, any single characteristic from 0 to 0.5 isn't really all that weird. So a sum total of less than 0.5 is definitely not out of the ordinary. At this point, you have to find out what is the probability of this happening. So how weird is this value? Is that value like that 50 out of 100 coin tosses, 62 out of 100, or 89 out of 100? You may have a sheet of paper that tells you these values. I use a scientific calculator. I can type in what is the chance of getting this. I use up to infinity, a number like this to a billion, and the probability is 98.3. What this value means, and this is a little tricky, if I'm expecting his snakes to be normal, his snakes were slightly different than normal, but there is a 98% chance of getting these results by dumb luck. So if these snakes would happen for 98% of all snakes, does Farmer Joe have bad land where the snakes are dying? No. His snakes, the probability that these sizes are normal, they would happen 98% of all snakes. So his snakes are really aren't all that weird. Now, let's go to Farmer Frank. Let's do the same process using Farmer Frank's numbers. And we'll go a little quicker this time. So Farmer Frank, his snake was 3 minus the expected value of 5 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by the expected size of 5 inches leads to a 0.8. Notice already, just one value of Farmer Frank is already higher than the sum total of Farmer Joe's. Let's move on. Then second, the day five measurement. His snake was four when the expected value was nine. That's negative five. Negative five squared is 25. 25 divided by the expected amount of nine gives us a value of 2.777. Day 10, his snake was 10 minus 13 was the expected size. That's negative three. Three squared is nine. Nine divided by that 13 gives us a chi-squared value of 0.69. The 20th day, his was 12 when I was expecting 19. That's negative 7. Negative 7 squared is 49. Divided by 19 gives us a chi-squared value of 2.57. And finally, on day 30, his was 20 when I was expecting 32. That's negative 12. Negative 12 squared is 144, divided by the expected value right here of 32, gives us a chi-squared value of 4.5. When I add up all those chi-squared values, the total of all those values put together was about 11.339. Once again, how rare are these totals? And again, you can either use a sheet of paper that already has these totals in it, scientific calculator. I used a scientific calculator and came up with 2%. Again, what does this 2% mean? If I was expecting these snakes and Farmer Franks to be normal, typical, average, the probability that a normal snake would be these sizes would only happen 2% of the time. So... Do I feel like something's weird about Farmer Snake, Farmer Frank Snakes? Yeah, because there's only a 2% chance of getting this by dumb luck. 
So anything less than about 5% is where scientists start to question what's wrong. So again, in the end, I'm not going to shut down Farmer Frank's farm. I may just get another snake and check it again. But according to the data, there is only a 2% chance of a regular snake having these crazy low sizes. So I am going to say, man, maybe there is some chemicals or some radioactive material in Farmer Frank's field. Yes? It doesn't tell you what's wrong. It just tells you something is I Correct. Know, right? It, we don't know what's causing these snakes to be smaller. And don't forget, we could be wrong. There is a 2% chance that this snake is normal. Because the probability of seeing these numbers would only happen 22% of the time by dumb luck. But since that's out of the ordinary, that's where you want to stop and say, hey, what are the reasons? So yes, you would have to do some research, research as to what are the reasons these snakes are small. And if we get, you know, we're probably going to use the chi-squared table. Mm -hmm. The percentage you have up there, does that equate to the p-value on that table? Yes, the p-value does just stand for probability. And once again, this is the probability of seeing these numbers when I'm expecting these numbers. And that would be a p-value of... 0.02 probably, right? And a p-value of 0.02, and then in math, just move the decimal over two times. That's how I'm getting 2%. But p-value of 0.05 is kind of anything below 0.05. In, in statistics right. and in most sciences, in order to say something's out of the ordinary, we do try to, that's sort of like our, I call it a Mendoza line, our border line. That's the point where we say, stop, hold up, let's see what's going on. Now, I will also say that this, again, was ca called a chi-squared goodness of fit. A goodness of fit chi-squared is when you only have one column of data. And I want to make sure you understand you can't use chi-squared for everything. For instance, say you have one caterpillar. And you're like, okay, a caterpillar is supposed to have 100 feet. And mine only has 99. Whoa, he's weird. Really, you need a whole column of expected data. And when you said you might have a whole table, now that we have, there's two other chi-squares. There's a chi-squared for homogeneity and a chi-squared for independence. That's if you have more than one variable. Notice our only variable is the length of a snake. If you were to transform in yours into the length of a snake and male and female, or maybe have a second type which is copperhead and gardener snake, you know, now there's different types of chi-squared tests. But pretty much, they're all using the same formula, observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Thanks. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Mr. DeRose. Thanks,